Hello everyone. Exams don't always go well and when they don't, it is very natural to feel down about it. This is the exam season across many institutes including here at IIT Kharagpur. So I thought this will be a good time to share some tips with you which will help you to bounce back from a bad exam. Now please don't get me wrong. In this video, I'm not going to prescribe any kind of magic bullet. Rather, what I'm going to suggest is very much common sense knowledge which you as intelligent students already are aware of in your heart of hearts. But sometimes we all need a nudge in the right direction to help us realize what we already know. What is really required in this case is a proper assessment of one situation and an honest effort in the right direction. So what do we really mean by a bad exam? Because it means different things for different kinds of students. For the top performing student, for example, a bad exam would mean something which would maybe remove them from the top of the class. For the mid-level student, uh, it means something different, probably something which would push them closer to the lower half of the class. And for the other kinds of students, a bad exam will probably mean something which puts a question mark on whether they'll be even able to pass the subject. So we have to discuss this thing from this different points of view. So first of all, for the top performing students, uh, I will take the help of, uh, some of a tip which I received from the department rank one of my own batch here in the mechanical engineering department at IIT Kharagpur. This was from way back in 2006 or seven, I think. Uh, he told me that when an exam goes bad, because it used to happen for him also, very rarely, but it used to happen, uh, what he uh, did was to just change the mindset. Okay, so what he told me was, uh, it is ridiculously simple actually. He said that when an exam goes bad, just think that you have to minimize the damage. It is as simple as that. Minimize the damage. So I will extend a little bit on that and say that when an exam goes bad, yes, you have to minimize the damage, but you also have to realize that realistically speaking, you are not going to pull off a miracle in the rest of the semester. Probably your mid-semester has gone bad. Uh, so in the rest of the semester, what more can you do to probably you are no more getting the highest possible grade. So just try to minimize the damage, as my friend said. Okay, and uh, think realistically about it. That's it. You're all intelligent, very intelligent students at the top of the class. You know what you have to do. Just do it. That's it. That's it for the top performing students. I don't think you need me more to expand on it. Next for the mid-level students. Well, uh, in, a, uh, in a place like IIT, I think uh, this is the broadest category of students, uh, the mid-level students uh, who with some amount of effort can actually perform very well, but sometimes a slip occurs here and there. So. When an exam goes bad for you guys, uh, what I will suggest is first do a little bit of introspection, like a hardcore introspection, why the exam went bad. Uh, if it is purely because of your own effort or your lack of effort, actually, well, you know what to do. You don't need me to tell. But sometimes what happens is that uh, so the, the, the nature of the exam is such, the nature of the course, the subject is such that uh, despite your best efforts, it may not be possible to perform well in the examination if you do not have a very, very good, a high level of on the spot problem solving ability inside the pressure cooker situation of an examination. This is something which many people do not realize. Okay, there are many subjects, many problem based subjects like this uh, in every department, for example, in computer science, I think one of my friends told me that uh, they have this subject called discrete maths, uh, where you really have to perform on the spot in the examination, despite your best uh, efforts, best, despite your best preparation will not be enough. Uh, similarly, in mechanical engineering, we have something at the second year level called dynamics, at least here at IIT Kharagpur, it is one of the toughest subjects in our department. Uh, you may prepare really well for it. But ultimately, on the day of the examination, sitting there, you have to perform. Okay, there is no other way. There is no two ways about it. Uh, my own subject, mechanics of solids, uh, well, it's not the easiest of subjects, but I think uh, it is. It does not really fall into that category of, uh, of subject. If, if you have prepared uh, well, uh, there is no way you're going to perform that badly. Okay, uh, well, what do you do in this case? 
well i would suggest that you take uh, inspiration for this kind of a situation from your je days so uh, the reason why i'm saying this is that see je level problems there the content is very much easy it's basically plus 2 physics chemistry maths so that's not very difficult maybe chemistry is a little bit difficult but i mean overall the content is not difficult but the problems are so very hard so because of a certain level of ingenuity which you require to solve these problems and that is something which to a certain extent it is my personal belief is god given uh, but it can be honed and you all have honed this ability through a lot of practice so during your je days you you through your coaching through your own efforts you did such a lot of practice that even if you did not have this god given ability uh, for problem solving you did manage to do well uh, you did manage to crack the exam so now just think what 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 is missing so what is missing is that in all likelihood for these kinds of exams you are not solving enough problems and when i say that i mean you are not solving enough challenging problems you have to give yourself the time to go through those kind of things uh, because see your mind has your brain's ability has not magically changed uh, just in the course of two or three years uh, uh, so two or three years ago you did your uh, your je and within this span of 2 years your mind has not undergone a massive change in your problem solving ability so if it did not happen then without practice it is certainly not going to happen now without practice so you really have to understand this thing uh, so you have to uh, give yourself the time to solve challenging problems for practice okay so uh, without this net practice you will not be able to perform in the actual uh, actual field in the actual exam but there is a flip side to it also suppose you realize this suppose you take my advice and uh, you go for a uh, a lot of investment of time uh, on one subject will that be strategically wise think about it because already a large part of the semester is over probably half the semester is over in most of the cases as you are watching this video and in the rest of the already short time that you have in the semester how much are you going to improve your problem solving acumen in that subject so think a little bit uh, in a business like fashion how much of return of investment are you going to get by uh, putting in so much effort in just one subject will it perhaps not be at the detriment of other subjects where with a relatively less amount of effort you'll be able to really perform well because what you really need is the overall good performance in a semester so think about it also okay because at the end of the day you have to realize for this kinds of subjects you really have to put in that amount of time but when you do that there are only 24 hours a day you have to do a lot of other things also uh, the other subject should not suffer this is this is my uh, my suggestion to you next and finally for the uh, students for whom a bad exam really means a question mark over whether they'll be even able to pass the subject now for these kinds of students compared to the previous two kinds of students i think there is the greatest scope of improvement the reason is very simple actually you guys are making such a lot of obvious mistakes and the kind of mistakes which are so very easy to fix that just with a little bit of tweaking with a little bit of adjustment in your working style in your study habits you can bring about a sea change in your results so uh, please take this seriously okay so the most uh, obvious kind of mistake which uh, which i have seen uh, most guys like this do and this is this is an experience i'm pulling from my own student days when i have seen many of my batchmates go down this route uh, i have seen many students also now that i have become a faculty go down this route is that they just don't attend classes okay so hold on before you cringe uh, this is not me as a professor uh, as a faculty member uh, giving out the usual rant okay so just hear me out so when i say that uh, you really need to attend classes i really mean that you need to attend classes not just physically out of the fear of completing your attendance requirement the mandatory attendance requirement which uh, with some professors have some some institutes have uh, rather i mean being actually mentally properly present in the class and engage with what the professor is trying to teach 
see for most courses there are only three or four hours of lectures right so see there are 168 hours per week seven days 24 hours out of that can you not spare three or four hours for a subject in which there is actually a question mark of whether you are going to pass or fail think about it on top of that you read if you really want to push your improvement a little bit further i would say the best way and this is especially required uh, for problem based courses is that in addition to those three four hours you also invest not more than two three hours for for information based courses which are not at all problem based uh, i think just attending the lectures enough is enough you don't even have to go for any kind of self study in your room but for problem based courses yes beyond the lectures you need to keep up and uh, train your mind a little bit by uh, going for some kind of problem solving uh, not more than 2 hours so maybe 2 hours 3 hours for harder courses so out of those 168 hours that are present in a week can you not spare like 6 7 hours in total out of which 4 hours are there for actually attending the lectures and here is the zinger actually see <clears throat> many of you are thinking that oh i don't have the time i have lots of other things lots of extracurricular activities co curricular activities i have to go for uh, programming in aiml uh, because that is where where i want to go uh, i do not have the time to study these things i do not have even 6 or 7 hours but see if you if you just invest these 6 7 hours now every week later on you will not be so just before the examination the amount of time that you have to waste trying to find out the notes from all the regular students trying to find out what the syllabus is what the teacher has taught what are the important things for which this teacher has given implicit hints uh, for you to do well in the examination and mind you in the semester system this always happens so people who are regularly attending classes they get some implicit hints okay the teacher of course is not going to give away the questions but uh, some implicit hints of what is actually important really important and with, on which he is interested in testing the students this will be evident to all the regularly attending students so when you do this you almost give yourself this kind of an of a direct advantage so why not uh, why not exploit this okay so my suggestion is that just 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 give it a chance okay invest 6 7 hours out of which only 4 hours are there for uh, already there for your lectures and see if it uh, if it doesn't bring about a marked in improvement in your results okay so i really hope you will take my advice uh, and uh, just uh, and one last thing which i always want uh, always point out to my students here at iit kharagpur also is that see if you're not attending classes what are you basically doing you may think you may think that okay i am taking advantage of the various kinds of opportunities here uh, in the campus uh, the various extracurricular activities fine you're doing that but in the process uh, see your parents are investing so much money for your education okay and just hear me out uh, when you have paid your semester fees and you are not attending classes what you're basically doing is helping in improving the teacher student ratio for the benefit of the students who are actually regularly attending the classes so it is i know it it's kind of harsh for me to point it out like this but you are in fact basically paying for their better education okay so i leave this at, leave it this think about it and see if you really want to improve because that is what is really required some students just don't want to improve well in that case none of this advice applies but if you really want to improve if you are really feeling honestly down about a bad exam maybe think seriously about uh, implementing this pieces of advice so all the very best to all of you uh, to all the kinds of students and i hope that this little video will help you really genuinely to improve by the time the end semester comes along so all the very best to all of you thank you